Hello, we are now in unit 10, which is uh, the concluding unit of the introduction to microeconomics. I am your host, Elias. So in this video, we are going to look at uh, the market structure. Specifically in this unit, we are going to look at the market structure and then uh, we will have uh, the perfect competition uh, structure in this first uh, session. So let me quickly take you through the outline of the market structure. The first thing we'll look at is uh, the perfect competition, which you can find in Manchu chapter 14 and Marconel chapter number 9. Later on, we will look at uh, the monopoly, which you can find in Manchu chapter 15 and Marconel chapter 10. And then we will have uh, the monopolistic competition as well as uh, the oligopoly. So uh, these uh, last two, which is uh, oligopoly and monopolistic competition, can be found in uh, McConnell chapter number 11. Okay, so let's uh, quickly look at uh, the composition of, of uh, the market structure or what determines uh, the, uh, uh, the firm or industry, I mean, what determines the industry where the firm will belong. So when we are looking at market structures, these identify how a market is made up. Number one, in terms of the number of firms in the industry. For example, if we have a lot of uh, firms in a given industry, it means we are in, uh, and if these firms are selling a homogeneous product, uh, then it means uh, we are in a perfectly competitive industry. And if there is only one firm, then we are in a monopoly. We will also look at, uh, uh, we will also identify the firm in terms, the market in terms of the nature of the products produced, whether they are homogeneous or uh, differentiated. Then we'll look at uh, the degree to which the firm can influence the price. So depending on its uh, power or, or state to influence the price, a given firm can be categorized uh, in terms of the industry where it belongs. Then we also have the nature of the profit levels that are obtained. So in a monopoly, we will see a different kind of uh, an arrangement where firms are making profit and what decisions they make. So in, uh, with that, then we'll look at firms' behavior in terms of the pricing strategy, the non-pricing competition, as well as uh, the output levels. Who determines what price to set and how is that price set is uh, one key distinguishing feature amongst uh, the firms in any given uh, uh, market structure. Then we we'll also have uh, the extent of barriers to entry, a firm with uh, uh, where there is free entry and exit, as well as where we we'll look at firms where there is no entry at all and what causes that. And then finally, we will look at the impact on the efficiency. And all these will help us identify a firm and then locate it to the appropriate uh, market structure where it belongs. Okay, so with uh, a given structure that on one extreme we have a perfect competition and on the other end we have the pure monopoly. So with perfect competition, remember we have a lot of firms selling uh, homogeneous products Whereas under pure monopoly, we only have one single firm selling a given product. And as such, that firm constitutes uh, the market. So with this, we see that the, if we are moving from pure monopoly to perfect competition, it means that uh, the more we are moving from pure monopoly, we will be coming, uh, drawing closer to a more comp uh, competitive uh, environment. And with that, there will be fewer imperfections. So if we are moving from monopoly to competition, we are, we are moving to a perfect uh, flow of uh, information, perfect flow of activities, and so on. And if we are moving the, uh, from perfect competition to pure monopoly, it means we're going closer and closer to imperfections. So with this then, with a perfect competition as uh, the, uh, one extreme where we have uh, a lot of uh, buyers and sellers selling homogeneous products, Close to it is the monopolistic competition where we have uh, a lot of sellers who are selling differentiated products. Then close to monopolistic competition comes the oligopoly and then we have the duopoly. And lastly, um, a second lastly, we have monopoly and finally the pure monopoly. So we are going to distinguish these in their respective uh, uh, presentation of the market structure. Okay, so let's uh, now look at perfect competition. 
So simply defined, a market structure is, uh, is said to be perfectly competitive if there is a very large number of firms who are producing a standardized product. In other words, these are selling a homogeneous product. Maybe simply put, we can look at the features of a perfectly competitive market. Number one is that we have a large number of buyers and sellers in the market. So as such, it means these people, remember, they are selling uh, homogeneous products and therefore they are price takers. They have no influence on the prices that uh, are in the market. They take price as given and then uh, choose the level of output that they will produce uh, at a given price. With that, there is free entry and exit into the market. And therefore, because of this, any firm coming in will take the market price as given and therefore decide how much output will be produced. And lastly, we note that under perfect competition, there is perfect flow of information. If any firm decides to charge a higher price, consumers will be well informed and as such, they will deviate and go to another person who is selling a given product because these products are considered to be perfect substitutes. A good example you can uh, look at is the, the agricultural products, so, uh, maybe say maize. So you will see that there are many uh, producers of maize and many buyers of maize. And because maize, uh, maize will be maize regardless of which farmer produced it, it means that a person selling maize at a higher price is likely to lose off compared to the one at a lower price. Okay, so now let's uh, then look at the short-run equilibrium determination of uh, under, I mean, under perfect competition. The first approach we look at is the total revenue approach, where uh, we look at total revenue as well as a total cost. And then the gap between the two, we look at the part where the profit is maximized. So the largest gap determines the level of output that the firms will produce. So in short, to maximize profits, a firm must maximize the difference between total revenue and total cost. That is, we get the difference between total revenue and total cost. And at the part where the two will be maximum, that becomes the level of profit. And therefore, the associated output will be the perfectly competitive output. And then from that, we see that uh, total revenue is found by getting the difference, I mean, the product of the price times the output produced. So if you have uh, your output level and then the price at which each unit is sold, then the product of the two gives you the total revenue for the firm. And if you subtract total cost, the costs incurred in your production process, what you end up, uh, what you will remain with is the profit for the firm. So let's look at uh, total revenue in uh, more details and see how we can obtain total revenue. So given an invest demand function, the total revenue function can be obtained by multiplying the demand function by Q, which is the output. So remember that uh, when we have a demand function, Q is equal to A, A minus BP, this is a direct demand function. An inverse demand function will start with uh, the price. So P will be equal to, we can say maybe uh, A minus BQ, where we can just note that the A, uh, these two are different, just that we are using uh, them just uh, for presentation. Don't think the A we have here is the same value we will have here. Because after uh, changing this and making P subject of the formula, definitely some of these values, we, uh, variables will change. Okay, so with that, so we know that uh, then from the total revenue function, we can obtain the marginal revenue function by simply getting the change in the total revenue brought about by a given change in the output, which we present as uh, the uh, change in total revenue divided by change in total output. Or if you have uh, a function, a total revenue function, you can simply get the derivative of the total revenue with respect to the output. Okay, now, for example, if we are given the market demand function, which is an inverse demand function, because P is a subject here, 
meaning it's an invest demand function and then we are required to get total revenue we note that total revenue is equal to the price times the quantity now in this function the whole of this part is the price because the price is equal to this meaning this whole part here is equal to the price so if we are to get the total revenue we multiply this part times the quantity and if we do that we will have this structure here so total revenue will be equal to 12 minus 2q which is the price times the quantity and if we distribute that we will have a 12q minus 2q squared now from this we can actually get our marginal revenue now not that since we have the total revenue function for us to get the marginal revenue we need to differentiate the total revenue function with respect to the output q doing that we see that our marginal revenue will be equal to 12 minus 4q because here this would drop one and subtract one from the power remember when we looked at our math review and therefore when you go to the second part here you drop the power two which will be two times two and then you subtract one from the power you will remain with q therefore marginal revenue will be equal to 12 minus 4q okay so profit is maximized uh, if we look at the marginal revenue approach so that was the total revenue approach but under marginal revenue approach profit is maximized where marginal revenue is equal to the marginal cost so this is the profit maximizing rule that we are going to adopt under perfect competition and other market structures where we are going and see uh, what then makes a difference between uh, i mean in terms of pricing decision so we will note that if the marginal revenue is greater than the marginal cost it means that a firm then has to produce uh, keep on producing so that uh, each output brought in is uh, bringing in more revenue this is because if uh, the additional revenue is more than the additional cost then it means it will be profitable for a firm to produce more on the other hand if the additional revenue is less than the additional cost for each additional output it means the firm should not produce that output this means therefore that the only part where the firm will be maximizing profit is a part where marginal revenue is equal to the marginal cost if marginal revenue is greater it means it's more profi uh, profitable for a firm to keep on producing more output and if marginal revenue is less than the marginal cost it means every additional unit produced will lead to losses for the firm and as such profit will only be maximized where marginal revenue equal to marginal cost now remember that under perfect competition we said that their firms are price takers meaning they do not affect the price they take the price as given as such price is constant for the firm if that be the case it means then that the marginal revenue will be equal to the price because the price is not changing and only output is changing and if you differentiate a total revenue function which is price times quantity it means that your marginal revenue will be equal to the price and it will be constant throughout the operation of the firm and as such the profit maximizing output in the short run is at a point where the price is equal to the marginal revenue which is equal to the marginal cost now in our previous uh, on our previous slide we indicated that the profit maximizing rule is a point where marginal revenue is equal to the marginal cost but because under perfect competition price is equal to marginal revenue it means therefore that the profit maximizing rule can also be generalized by uh, including price that price is equal to marginal revenue which is equal to marginal cost or simply put that the price is equal to the marginal cost and from the total revenue function we can also obtain the average revenue function for the firm and remember the term average here means total revenue per unit of output produced and if we do that we will obtain total revenue divided by the output and that gives us the average revenue
Now, if you not, if you look at this part here, where we are saying total revenue uh, is equal to price times quantity, and if uh, price is constant, it means that the only thing that is changing is a quantity. And therefore, if we divide this by quantity, because that's what we're getting here, total revenue divided by quantity, it means that uh, what you're getting then is the average revenue. And if you do that, you this will cancel, you will only remain with your price P. It means then that for the uh, firm in the perfectly competitive market, the price is equal to the marginal revenue, which will be equal to the average revenue. Okay, so now, uh, thus, the average revenue is the same as the demand function. So when you see average revenue, we're going to present it with, uh, uh, we're going to represent it with uh, the demand function. Now, since the average revenue has a slope of zero because it is horizontal, in, uh, in the perfectly competitive market, it means that marginal revenue and marginal cost are the same. And if we take that as a gospel truth, it means that then under perfectly competitive uh, uh, market, price is equal to marginal revenue, which is equal to the average revenue. Okay, so now let's look at the graphical illustration of uh, the firm, firm's uh, uh, profit maximizing rule that on the vertical axis, we put the cost uh, uh, or revenue or cost and revenue. And on the horizontal axis, we present the output produced, which is the total product for the firm. Now, with a demand function, which is horizontal, at the part where price equal to marginal revenue, equal to marginal cost, I mean, to marginal revenue equal to average revenue, and, which aver and of which average revenue is equal to the demand, it means then that the demand for a firm under a uh, perfectly competitive industry will be a, a, a horizontal, uh, will be horizontal or perfectly uh, elastic. With a marginal revenue curve that is uh, upward sloping, we can we note that the profit maximizing rule is a part where marginal revenue is equal to the marginal cost, or simply put, where price is equal to the marginal cost so and that is at this part here so the, the level of output uh, which is associated with that level is the equilibrium output under perfect competition so firm uh, a firm under perfectly co uh, competitive uh, situations will produce at a point where marginal revenue equal to marginal cost just uh, for illustration, to make uh, work uh, look uh, neat, we have that line there, which is showing us the level of output produced, and we see Q star as the level of output produced uh, for a firm under perfectly competitive situations. With this, we are then uh, able to see that we can now analyze uh, the profit or loss situations under perfectly competitive uh, markets. So what we've just uh, displayed here is the equilibrium condition. And from this, we are then going to be able to display the profit uh, or loss situations in the short run. So thank you very much for watching. If you have questions, please send an email to muawelias at gmail.com. I will see you in session two, where we'll start uh, by looking at the profit or loss situations in the short run. Bye-bye.